everybody, it's Malakad Awesome. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. Let's get started. I'm super excited for today's video. What we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna have a little Q&A today, kind of different from my normal videos, but instead of like answering you guys' questions, which I want to do a Q&A like that eventually, but I wanted to ask some questions that I wish someone would have answered for me like three or four years ago as like, let's say I was like in middle school, what I would ask my senior self. So let's get into a couple of these videos actually. So I'm just gonna do four questions per video to kind of make it not too incredibly long. So I'm just gonna ask myself four questions to like answer for you guys. If you guys are just curious about the Christian lifestyle and what that looks like. Okay, so the first question I wanted to ask is, should I read my Bible? Whenever I was younger, it was always kind of like a struggle because like I knew all the stories from like growing up in church and things like that, but and then I had to like go back and read it. And obviously I think first of all, you have to find the right translation where it's not like, it's easy, it, it's easy for you to understand and that you like understand what's going on. I think that that's really important. My favorite Bible that I've ever had, I think is definitely the Passion Bible. Um, sadly, they only have it in the New Testament, so that's another like downside of it. But it is so, so powerful. The Passion is 100% my favorite translation. But I think this one is also ESV, and it is the full Bible right here. I think that a way that the Bible reading became a lot easier for me as I grew up was to really like highlight it well, if that makes sense, and like do notes on the side because um, I'm. I like looking at color like visually so that always helps me to have like color in my Bible. This is Revelations as you can tell. Like there's some things I haven't got to in this Bible because I actually just got this Bible for Christmas. Like blank. Just consuming the word. But um, yeah. So why should you read your Bible as a teenager? Personally, like the first thing I can think of that comes to my mind whenever people always ask me that question is that every single morning, whenever people get on social media, there's so many things that are lies from the enemy. There's so much chaos and confusion in our world that you like need the word of God because this is like something you can stand on. This is the Bible is like firm knowledge and truth. Like, like it affirms who you are. Like if you are dealing with like identity issues, like you were trying to figure out who you are like in this world, especially like junior year and senior year was like a really big identity year for me where I was like trying to find out what I wanted to do whenever I grew up. Well, I'm kind of grown up now. But like you're trying to figure out, you know, what you want to do after high school and all of these things. So those are like really big identity years. And if you are not like reading the word of God, you're going to look to find your identity in the world. Like you, you are not what the world says you are. I, one thing I love is John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. And the enemy has infested himself in this world. So if we're looking to the world for identity, then you're gonna be trying to find identity in something that was set up to destroy you. That is why you have to have the word of God in your life. Sorry, you got a phone call. I think that also it gives you like, the Bible gives you like stories that you can like combat the enemy with, like with scripture. Like when the enemy starts to like try to feed into feed into like things, and I can look back on scripture and say, "Well, this is how the Lord said to fight this battle." And whenever you're filling yourself up with the Word of God, it's so easy to minister because like if you're pouring the Bible and like everything in the Bible into your heart, then it just automatically comes out of your mouth, like. The more I read the Bible, the more it's like ingrained in my head. So I'll be in certain situations in my life and like, I'll just start rolling Bible verses off the tip of my tongue just because it's so like invested in my heart. And I also, there's so many reasons I can talk about why you um, need to read your Bible. It's so, so important. Like genuinely keep yourself accountable. Read it every night or every morning, whichever is easier for you. I personally read mine at night because I feel like I'm more awake at night. I used to try to read it in the mornings, but it was always a struggle because I'm not a very big morning person but um at night uh, my mind is normally works a lot better so i try to read mine at night but also you know if you don't know who you are read the word of god know god to know yourself to know your purpose that's something i always say and where you should start reading personally if you're new to reading your bible and you want to know where to read i would start in matthew and then go to john so powerful amen praise god i love matthew matthew probably is in my top five books of the bible probably like number three it's so good okay anyways question is modesty 
Okay, this is kind of a sensitive subject. For some people, for me, it's not. Okay, so modesty is something that is not popular in our culture. I think that personally for me, I would never want to tempt someone that's struggling with things. Like, I would, I would rather be covered up, obviously, so that I feel comfortable and I, it's pleasing to the Lord. But also, you never know what people are struggling with. And you would never want to, you know, tempt a brother in Christ. And so that's just how I personally look at it. And I think that, you know, like, why, why would you want to draw people, draw attention to yourself through like showing more skin, things like that. So personally for me, I just think that, you know, there's no, like, there's no need to be showing um, off yourself like that. I think that whenever Christians try to be showy and like wear scandalous skin, showing things i think that that just makes us look more like the world and if we're trying to live set apart we're trying to live for god and try to lead a godly example if we look like the rest of the world then we're literally just confusing non-believers on what christians do and act like so i just think that you know modesty is also a heart posture like i think that modesty it can be like oh I, i'm not allowed to wear that but instead of like thinking, oh, I can't wear that, and I can't wear that, and I can't wear that. Be like, I don't even desire to wear stuff like that, especially because, you know, summer's rolling around, ladies. Be modest. Modest is hottest. Question number three. When is it okay to get into a relationship? My sweet friends, let's talk about this. Okay, when is it okay to get into a relationship? One of the biggest problems in our generation is that people constantly are looking for validation so they get into relationships that will give them validation. No. Okay, if you don't know who you are, like if, if I don't know who Malachi Dawson is, I can't get into a relationship because I can't be myself if I don't know who I am. You know, I think that you have to be firm in your relationship with God. Oh my gosh. You cannot expect someone to lead your relationship with God. Like, I think that that's so important. You can't base your relationship with God off of somebody else's. So you can't go to church just because a certain someone's going to church. It has to be about you, your relationship with God. And if you can't prioritize your relationship with God above another relationship, red flag, don't get into a relationship. That's why I think people that get into relationships at a young age is just a no-go. Like, don't do it, friends. Um, and I know that that's like, so like, mm, like people don't want to do that in this culture because everyone's like, oh, boyfriend, girlfriend. No, I'm telling you, you save yourself so much. I actually didn't start dating for like a long time. And, um, I think that it really benefited me to not have tons of heartbreaks growing up. Like in middle school, bro, I didn't even know that you could like boys. I thought all boys were like your brothers, like. Then I went to high school and I was like, what? This one's kind of a touchy subject, but I just don't think that you should really, like in high school, I know every people get into relationships and that's fine. I just think that you have so much more fun if you're not worrying about a boyfriend all throughout high school because you can like have your friends, you can have amazing guy friends, you can have amazing girlfriends, you can live your life in high school, go after God and then no worries, no stress, no stress. Now, um, if they don't know themselves, it's really hard to get into a relationship with them too because if they can't spiritually lead you, then you're just going down a red flag relationship. Don't do that. Picking the right person is super important. That's a whole other video in itself. But when is it okay for you to be in a relationship? Honestly, I would listen to your parents because like, if my mom did not think I was ready for a relationship, I probably would never have gotten in one. And I'm not in one right now. I think that, you know, first of all, I'd listen to your parents. I would pray about it. Come on, somebody. You need to pray about your relationships. I'm not joking. Pray about it. Because if God is like, eh, maybe not, then you definitely should not get into a relationship because he sees so much farther down the road. And he honestly, he has your best interest in mind. And so if he says it's okay, then he obviously knows that, you know, you're not probably going to get hurt. And then it's for his will that you get into that relationship. But if he says no, then it's for a reason because he's saving you from heartbreak. So please just pray about it. Please pray about it. And like actually hear from him. Silence the flesh in the name of Jesus. Anyways, that's enough relationship talk. Move on to my last question. How do I make Christian friends? This is one that I probably could not have really told you about a year ago. But I really learned a lot this past year. So much especially in high school, you just learn so much about people and friendships and all those things. 
How do you get Christian friends? First of all, be the friend that you're trying to get. Okay, that was that really didn't make sense. So if I am not a Christian myself, well, I am, but I'm talking about in hypothetically. If I'm not a Christian, how can I expect to get Christian friends? I have to show up like the friend I want to be. Like, I have to be the one that's going to keep my friends accountable. I have to be, you know, keeping our conversations, like, away from, you know, inappropriate topics. I have to be pursuing God more than anything else and encouraging other people to pursue God. I have to be doing all of those things for me to get Christian friends. What I actually did was whenever I was, you know, going radically after God, those friends came along. And whenever I began to post about it on social media, God brought those friends and he took away the wrong ones and he brought in the right ones. And so whenever you begin to change, your friends begin to, begin to change and accept the change. Because obviously, you know, as people walk away, new people will always walk in. That's just how life goes. That's how God sets up life. I mean, I can tell you a million stories of, you know, how God shut one door. He always opened up another one. And yeah, so all in all, that is basically all of my four questions for today. Kind of some sensitive subjects. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Those are just my personal opinions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For the next video, another Q&A. If you guys want any other videos, any other questions for me to answer, put them down in the comment section down below. You can also connect with me in the comment section down below. Find my Instagram. If you want some cute Christian merch, you can go down in there. Use my discount code to get a percentage off. We can match. We can twin. Amen, amen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys so much. Bye.